Hello, today I'm going to be talking about DNFing books and my unique stance on this because I think my views on this topic are a little bit different than most people. Now, here's the thing. I am pretty DNF avoidant with the exception of one thing and that one thing happens to be audiobooks. I do DNF audiobooks if I feel the narrator is a mismatch for me or if I'm in a mood that that is not conducive to audiobook listening then I will DNF an audiobook. So I do have that one exception. I don't always concentrate well with audiobooks. It varies, but with physical books, with visual reading, I am very DNF avoidant. So I want to give my stance on this because I think it's unique to most of BookTube right now. I know there's a tag about this, the DNF tag, and I was kindly tagged in the DNF tag by KFox a long while back. I'll link her video down below in the description. And I never did it because I've always wanted to talk about this topic, but I've always wanted to do it more freestyle. And actually I did film a freestyle talking video about this topic about a year ago. And what was interesting about that is that in that video, I was trying to make a case for DNFing. And by the time I got to the end of the video, I talked myself out of it and I never posted the video. So I haven't felt ready to talk about this again until now, so we'll see how it goes. To give some context as to why I am the way I am, and no judgment if you're somebody who believes in DNFing, who enjoys DNFing, who finds incredible value, or you don't feel like you wanna waste your time with a book you don't wanna read, I get it, I know, I understand, good for you. I just wanna share my own unique stance on this. No shame or judgment for anybody who chooses differently than I do. So just to give you my backstory here, I did get into reading, not through fantasy, but through horror, I guess, or YA horror. It's not even real horror. Um, back when I was in middle school, I was pretty obsessed with reading back then. I then went through a couple of years when I wasn't into reading as much when a friend introduced The Hobbit to me. And once I read The Hobbit, I totally fell in love with fantasy. I just knew it was my genre. And I loved hanging out with people who were into fantasy. And I started reading The Lord of the Rings shortly after finishing The Hobbit. And I loved The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. I got to Return of the King. And for whatever reason, I stopped reading it. I think I had a library copy at the time. I had to return it, something along those lines. But I kept trying to restart The Lord of the Rings. And I famously didn't finish The Lord of the Rings until last year. Um, I don't know exactly why, if it was a timing thing. I do think a lot of crazy things were happening in my life back then, so that could have contributed to my lack of concentration or ability to feel immersed. I'm not sure, but I found that was the case with a lot of fantasy books I picked up and actually for the next several years. So I went through phases where I would finish books, but then I would get to the next book and suddenly the gravity of my lack of motivation would swallow me whole and I wouldn't be able to finish the book. And whenever I would go through a book that I couldn't finish, I'd find that I'd lack motivation to pick up any books for several months following. This happened to me off and on for many years. I think about 10 years ago, I got back into reading fantasy or got really into the genre for the first time since I was a teenager with A Song of Ice and Fire. And that really surprised me, especially how quickly I went through those five books. After that, I read Dune, I read some other classic sci-fi books, and I was really into reading again. Then a friend gifted me Herman Hesse's The Glass Bead Game. Somebody I really admire gifted this to me. And so I was honored by the gift. I started reading it and I struggled. It took me over a year to finish this book, maybe longer, and my husband even begged me to DNF the book, <laughs> but I was stubbornly refusing to DNF the book. I did put it down for months at a time, and I don't know what it was. It just really struggled getting into the book. I think it didn't meet my expectations. For some reason, I was expecting this would be more of a science fiction book, and it sort of is but not really and it doesn't really have a plot or not a conventional one and so i wasn't expecting any of that i can understand why the person who gifted it to me gifted it to me i can totally see 
why he enjoyed it. But for me, I really struggled with it. I really struggled to connect with it. And so I went through a year or so or more in which I wasn't picking up the book and I felt guilty starting any other book because I hadn't finished this book. So I just couldn't do it. And I'm not one of those people who does well at reading multiple books at once. I've learned that over and over again. At one point, I finally decided that it was going to be my goal to be a reader again. And part of the reason that I wanted to become a reader again is because I loved reading when I was younger. I absolutely fell in love with reading as a kid. And I remember being totally immersed in different worlds and I wanted that experience again. In fact, I kept having dreams about reading and the beauty and excitement and wonder it would bring me. And so I was determined to become a reader of fiction again. The challenge was just getting the motivation to get into reading and I didn't want to start until I finished this book. So I committed to reading five minutes a day. So just a minimum of five minutes a day, or it could be just a couple of pages a day. I made it a very minimal goal of just reading something every day. And the crazy thing is I finished the book. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe I finished the book when I finished it. And of course, every time I'd read for five minutes or a few pages, the next thing I know, most days I would read more than that. And once I finished the book, I felt such a great sense of completion and excitement that I did it. I won. I beat this book. <laughs> I know it's not about beating a book, but I felt like such a great sense of accomplishment that I finally finished this book that's been lingering over my head for the last couple of years that I was determined to read, especially because it was such a special gift to me. The rewards of finishing the glass bead game were so big for me. And you know, who cares? I wasn't able to talk to anybody about it. I did mention to my friend I finished it and he probably didn't even care at that point because it was a few years later. You know, um, nobody cared. Nobody cared that I finished this book. But for me, I got such a sense of personal satisfaction, such a sense of accomplishment that I finished this book that I found challenging to get into, that I was struggling to connect to. And actually, even though I did have a struggle with this book and I don't know if a reread would change that or not, it might, there were actually passages towards the end of this book that made me quite emotional. There was one passage in particular that actually brought me to tears. So the thing is, and this is the lesson I've learned, I've never regretted finishing a book. Even if I didn't like it, there's not one book I can think of under the sun that I've read cover to cover that I've regretted reading. Not one. And so that is actually the biggest reason why I am DNF avoidant. And here's the flip side to this. I have regretted every book I've DNF'd. If I had never finished this book, then I wouldn't know that great sense of accomplishment. I wouldn't be committed to reading every day as I am now. And I wouldn't have enjoyed some of those passages that brought me to tears that I can still look back on and appreciate. So there are several books though that I do regret DNFing. I'll just give a short list here. One book I DNF'd was Cushiel's Dart. And the reason I DNF this book is that the world building is dependent on sexual violence. It's more like sex and pain are the same thing and sex is part of the world and it's normalized and this character feels pleasure and pain and it's her curse. And I don't know, just the sadomasochistic thing going on there, it really started to bother me. It bothered me so much. I got about halfway through the book, I think. I got a good ways through the book and I found the plot intriguing. I enjoyed the writing style, but those elements were so uncomfortable for me. And I thought I was somebody who had a high level of what I could tolerate and I just couldn't get into that. Now I have heard since then though, I know a lot of people who read that book and who have nothing but positive things to say. I know Chris from Chris's Bookish Cauldron read and loved that book and series, and Yolene from Yolene Reads, and everyone I know who has read that book in that series has said that those parts are downplayed as you read on, and that there's much more to the plot and the political intrigue, and that it's very well written. So I actually regret 
not finishing that book. Another book that I regret not finishing is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I got a pretty good chunk into that book too. And I DNF'd it because I felt like Neil Gaiman was doing things with Norse mythology or certain mythologies that were going way over my head at the time. I felt like I wasn't in on the joke or in on what he was doing with the references. And so I felt, I don't know, it made me feel ashamed of myself, honestly. I felt like I wasn't smart enough for the book. So I DNF'd it. And I felt ashamed of that because my best friend loved that book. My brother loves that book. My uncle loves that book. Everyone I know loves that book, but I just struggled with it. So I always regretted DNFing that book. And then the other one I DNFed is Fireborn, (laughs) which is a YA book. And here's the thing, when I read A Song of Ice and Fire 10 years ago, I decided I was going to give myself 100 pages to get into the book because I knew it was not going to be easy for me. I wasn't used to reading a lot of adult fantasy at the time or fantasy in general, I should say. So I decided I'm going to give myself 100 pages to try out the waters and see how it goes. And sure enough, I got around page 100. I think it was a chapter with Bran when he was exploring the castle. That was when I got hooked. That was the moment I got completely hooked. And from then on, I was I was completely captivated by A Song of Ice and Fire. So I decided the 100 page mark would always be the point in which I would decide if a book was for me or not. But it turns out every time I get to 100 pages into a book, even if I'm not loving it, there's something in me that just isn't able to stop. So I don't stop now. And with YA, with Young Adult, I decided that my threshold would be 50 pages. So with Firebird, I actually got just under 50 pages into that book, or Fireborn, sorry, not Firebird, Fireborn, and I just wasn't connecting to it. I felt like it read a little young and decided it wasn't for me. And at the time, it wasn't the booktube darling that it is now. It had just come out. I ordered it through my library, and my library actually bought it based on my request. So I immediately got to check out a brand new edition from my library. I got 50 pages in or around there, and decided, no, I'm going to not finish this. And then later on, Alan from the Library of Alexandria loves that book and series as well as many others. And so did I make a mistake? <laughs> that's what I wonder. And that's the thing, I'll never know because I never finished it. So with every book that I've DNF'd, I have regretted DNFing and that's the case. And of course there are books that I haven't loved that I've finished. But here's the thing, because I've made it such a commitment to finish books, I have learned to train my brain over the years to find something to appreciate in every book, even if it's a book I don't like. I can't participate in a conversation about a book I didn't finish. I don't feel like I can. Um, Maybe some people feel like they can, but for me, I want to at least finish a book to be able to talk about it. And I can at least look back and acknowledge if timing was an issue or maybe the things that I was criticizing um, maybe wouldn't be a big deal if I reread the book. So at least I would know because I had finished the book. So I do think that there's value for me in finishing books. And then the last thing is that because I am such a committed reader when it comes to my reading policy and my DNFing policy, I'm very careful about the books that I do choose to commit to, that I do choose to pick up. And I try to avoid books that I don't think I'll love. And that's hard to do, and there are going to be misses sometimes. There are still books I read this year that I wasn't crazy about, but I am really glad that I have read all of them again. I have not read a book and finished it that I have regretted reading. It could happen. It could, but it hasn't happened yet. And does this mean I'll never DNF a book? No, I probably will at some point, maybe. (laughs) I don't want to commit to never DNFing because life happens. It could happen. I might go through some life stuff or there might be some book out there that actually pulls me out enough that... I have to DNF it. That could happen. I reserve that right. But for now, I kind of like that I'm a bit stubborn about finishing books or the loyalist that I am. 
And I do know there are a couple of people on booktube who are like me, but not very many. I know Michael K. Vaughn said in a video not too long ago that he's allergic to DNFing books. So maybe I'm in good company with a couple of people out there, but I know most people are big time into the idea of DNFing. But I do respect anybody who feels that they have a better reading life because they have a DNF policy. They allow themselves to do that. I can understand that and I totally respect that, of course. I guess one last thing I didn't mention is I do make a distinction between DNFing a book and temporarily pausing. I've done that a couple of times. I've gotten halfway through a book and then I had a read along or something I had to get read by a deadline. So I might put the book halfway on pause to read the other book and then I go back to that book. I have done that so that it's maybe a little different. But for the most part, once I start that journey, I'm going to finish it usually. <laughs> and again, the exception being audiobooks. Oh, and one other thing, I do DNF series. So if I read the first book in a series and I didn't love it, um, or if I read the first book in the series and I felt pretty satisfied with what I got out of that book, then I will probably not continue the series and I don't feel any guilt or shame about that. So that's my stance on that. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about this topic. If you're somebody who DNFs books, if you think I'm crazy, I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. Much respect to you for whatever you choose to do, of course, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. <music>